I remember the first time I saw John Hicks live. It was in 1966, actually Labor Day. Came down from West Hartford on the train, stay over in the city for a couple of days, and we wanted to see the Thad Jones Mel Lewis Jazz Orchestra at the Village Vanguard. They played their Monday nights, but on this particular Monday night, the Vanguard was closed. Labor Day. Okay. No shortage of jazz in Greenwich Village. Across town at the five spot on St. Mark's Place, just off Third Avenue. A group of people I did not know, but, but I knew the club was cool, the five spot, and I knew the music was probably going to be good. So we went, and I think it was 350. Uh, no drink minimum. We just paid the, uh, the admission charge and we had some Cokes. And we spent five dollars. A long time ago. Uh, 54 years ago, 55 years ago, something like that. Anyway, uh, the band turned out to be several people I actually became friends with and musicians whose music I really came to love very much. Charles Tolliver was the trumpeter. Uh, Charles Tolliver is a really fine musician, and I, I am so grateful to him for becoming one of the first musicians to start with his friend, pianist Stanley Cowell, the first really serious music uh, independent record label uh, run by musicians. Uh, Sun Ra did that in the 50s with Saturn Records. But Charles and recording mostly Sun Ra content, which we love. But uh, Charles and uh, Stanley were part of a community and, and released recordings by many fine musicians uh, during the run of Strata East Records. Not an easy task back then. Uh, the alto player in that band was Gary Bartz. I've, been a fan of Gary Bartz since then and a friend of Gary Bartz who worked on a show in 79 called Bebop, a theatricalized jam session, which was produced off Broadway. Just did a series with Gary a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, excuse me, here on the Jazz Video Guy channel, Miles 70, about uh, Miles' band in 1970 and 71 when Gary was a part of that band with Keith Jarrett and Jack DeJohnette and Michael Henderson and M. Toomey. Uh, and uh, Gary continues to make great music into his 80s. Uh, done a lot of work with McCoy Tyner, Charles Mingus, played with many people over the years as well as leading his own groups. Uh, said to me one time, uh, I need another lifetime to play this music. I've been working on it my whole life. I need more time. Okay, well, <laughs> keep working and keep playing and recording, man. We love what you're doing. But as it turns out, the pianist with that group was John Hicks. I did not know, I did not know John Hicks uh, at that time. I was 17 years old, I was into jazz, but I didn't know all the different cats on the scene. And uh, the drummer that night was Jack DeJohnette, who I saw many times after that. And, interviewed him and hung out with him a bit and uh, in Woodstock at his house. Uh, Jack's a fine man and a great musician. Uh, so that night, I can't remember anything about the music except that I liked it a lot. Uh, and shortly after that, uh, Booker Irvin, the great tenor player, really structurally sound on World Pacific Records. And uh, John Hicks was the pianist on that. Hey, I know that guy. That began, uh, that began uh, following Hicks and his music when I finally got to New York uh, in the late 60s. He'd pop up here and there. He was playing at Bradley's, playing with other people. Really got to hear him a lot and got to know him in the uh, 77, 78 at the Tin Palace, which is a great uh, musician's uh, hangout. Uh, on 3rd Street or 2nd Street and 3rd Avenue in the East Village, on the edge of the East Village there. Great music in that place. Stanley Crouch, the late Stanley Crouch, booked that room. And uh, John played there a lot and 
I remember uh, one time Hicks was playing, I can't remember, maybe it was Philly with Philly Joe, I don't remember, because a lot, a lot went on there and I don't remember everything that goes on in this life. But uh, it was either, was it Albert Daly or Stanley Cowell? I forget the pianist. While Hicks was playing and the audience was like really digging it, you know, because when he, could, when he got started, people would, I don't want to say they yell and scream, but they would, exp they would vocally express their enthusiasm. Uh, he would, this other pianist, I wish I could remember who it was, one of the cats, kind of came around the way the stage was situated. He could like come around in the back of Hicks and watch it, watch John Hicks, and watch him while he was playing and, and, and dig it. I mean, and uh, as the audience was digging it. And John Hicks was the musician's musician, certainly. Uh, after around the time, after that, he played with Betty Carter. Betty, the incredible vocalist, had some fantastic pianists. Uh, I'm talking about uh, John Hicks and Mulgrew Miller, Benny Green, Mark Carey. Uh, always had great pianists. I saw Betty with John Hicks at the Schubert Theater, Broadway Theater. And and then into the 80s and the 90s, heard John many times, uh, most notably with Pharaoh Sanders, uh, sometimes with his own groups, and also with Joe Lovano. And I was in the studio uh, for one of Joe Lovano's recording sessions with John Hicks. But his music continues to inspire me. I listen to him frequently. Uh, I picked out three solos here from a gig he did with Woody Shaw and Johnny Griffin. Uh, 1986, Subway Club in Germany, in Hamburg, Germany, and Tasty Band here, uh, the man who turned me on to this video, Alvin Queen on drums, Reggie Johnson on bass, John Hicks on piano, and the co-leaders of the group, Johnny Griffin and Woody Shaw. Yeah. And here are John Solo's on A Night in Tunisia by Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Blue Monk by Thelonious Monk, and What Is This Thing Called Love? Mm -hmm. 